Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about the metrics that we can use to evaluate disaster recovery programs. Now, we're going to cover a slew of acronyms here. By the time we're finished, you all understand RTO, RPO, and RSL, as well as MTTF, MTTR, and MTBF. Let's begin by discussing three metrics that are used to help an organization plan their disaster recovery efforts. Those are the RTO, RPO, and RSL. These three metrics are all about describing how we'd like our disaster recovery program to perform. They are goals for how quickly and what we'll be able to recover in the event of a disaster. The first one is the recovery time objective, or RTO. That's the targeted amount of time that it will take to restore a service to operation following a disruption. Now, this isn't how fast we think we can actually recover, it's how fast we want to be able to recover based upon our business needs. Let's say, for example, that our website is really important to our business. We might say that we'd just lose too much business if the site went down for more than an hour, so we'd set our recovery time objective to be one hour. The organization must also think about the amount of data that it needs to restore. Whenever we restore from backups, we are going to lose some data. There's always a time gap between when we perform the last backup and the time of the failure. The recovery point objective, or RPO, is the maximum time period from which data may be lost as a result of a disaster. We can lower our RPO by performing backups more frequently, but the more frequent our backups, the more expensive they are to perform and maintain. Finally, the recovery service level, or RSL, is the percentage of a service that must be available during a disaster. For example, you might set the RSL for your website at 50%, recognizing that diminished capacity is acceptable during a disaster response effort. Together, the RTO, RPO, and RSL provide valuable information to disaster recovery planners. Now, those are the first three disaster recovery metrics, and we still have some more to cover. But before I do that, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new cybersecurity videos as they come out. Now, the final three metrics help us assess our ability to restore IT services and components quickly in the event of a failure. We do this by looking at several time values. Now, the values we use depend upon whether an asset is repairable or non-repairable. That is, whether we can fix it or whether it needs to be replaced. For non-repairable assets, those that we can't fix, our most important metric is the mean time to failure, or MTTF. This is the amount of time that we expect will pass before an asset fails. Now, when using mean values, it's important to remember the meaning of average. Some of the assets of that type will fail before the MTTF, and some will last longer than the MTTF. Mean values are useful for planning purposes, but you shouldn't completely depend on them. If our asset is repairable, we look at two different values. The first is the mean time between failures, or MTBF. Now, this is very similar to the MTTF, it's just the average amount of time that passes between the failures of a repairable asset. The second value that we track for repairable assets is the mean time to repair, or MTTR. This is the amount of time that an asset will be out of service for repair each time that it fails. When we look at those two values together, we can get a good idea of the expected downtime for an IT component. I hope this video helped you understand disaster recovery metrics. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more IT certification content.